it and keeping it warm so it's not drying out and it's staying warm. I, I wouldn't mind if somebody would come up and give me a hand because I can, uh, if I, as I put these other clamps on, it'll help if somebody's holding this. Those clamps heat up fairly quickly when you put them in the fire. Oh, yes. Yeah. Let's do that. And okay. Excuse me. Just show over here. In the center. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no. Going around. If you do that one, we'll do this too. Let's bring this back out. Sure, this one be out further too. Uh, yeah, as long as it's not in the inside very too much. Now this is where we have to be careful that we just don't get too too much going on. If you want to come up and look, please do because you know you really won't see very much sitting back there. Now, um, I too assume that you're going to try and take that all the way down to the bottom. Nope. Or just part way. No. Nope. Um, I will take it down a little more than I have already, um, but. Not, not too much. For chrome tan leathers, if we want to stretch them a little bit, we use uh, a little bit of alcohol and water. Yeah. You, you wouldn't use alcohol on this, would you? No. Well, first of all, because you've got a torch. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's it's a little more difficult to do. I mean, chrome tan just. As I say, you can't shrink it outside of an auto grade. And most of us don't have those. So, um, this is, I mean, it, it, it's just, it, it, chrome tan is a very different element, animal, yeah. so to speak. So, um, it, it's, and so it, it really doesn't interest me very much. Uh, just personal prejudice, you know. I mean, I'm not. I'm interested in things that are hard, not things that are soft. And uh, chrome tan is is soft. You know. I mean, it's 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 more for cloth substitutes. By spraying with water and heating it up, you're essentially dipping it in the tank. Is that it? That's the same. Yeah, that's essentially it. Uh, it's just. Right, sir. How do you know when to stop? Like, 
I like to say long great. experience, but that, as I say, the, I, I have on occasion, not in the studio, but in public, where I'd rather not do it, I actually had gone too far. Uh, I thought I could just get a little more out of it, and um, it just split right along there. A design feature. Uh, yeah, I, I, tried, I tried that, but I couldn't solve the problem in the time I had. Actually, if you used a, uh, one of these big canning, um, the pressure cookers, you could duplicate the auto paper. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that would be, that would be. And they come a lot of them with a temper yeah. Either one doesn't matter. You can get the conversion chart. Yeah. Uh, for pressure equals how much temperature. Yeah. No, that would be. I'm not. I. I. I I'm not ready to put away my prejudices against chrome tan. I don't think that's. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, that is a solution. That, that's that's very interesting. I may have to because it's really you know veg tan is not quite so readily available as it once was. Okay. Now, how much more can I get away with? Think. Think I. I think I'd be wise to quit while I'm ahead here. That's fine. How do you? Yeah. Yeah, that's. Um, well, uh, to the stretching, not so much. Uh, but for the function of the bowl, you want the grain side in the inside. I mean, you can use these things for salads and things like that. Um, I finish them with uh, with with tongue oil, which is um, you know a, a non-toxic drying oil. Well, that's a little short. Um, let's see. So you can actually you can so they're 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 food safe. Okay. And even our veg food safe. Um. I, I'm still here. <laughs> I use one every day. Um, I guess it depends on the tannery. Um, you could, if you use, um, if you buy your t your veg tan leather from uh, bakers in in Devon and England, then it should be food safe. <laughs> Because it's oak bark tanned with, and the only thing that goes into it is lanolin. I'm not sure what this is. This is a Spanish leather, and I'm just not. It doesn't have a lot of fillers in it. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's actually quite nice. Um, but some of the um, other. Uh, the stuff that I used to use, which is a, yeah, I think we're almost there. What's that? I should point out that Baker leather from England is also used. They make the best insole materials for shoes and soles and things as well. Yeah, but it's a pre-industrial tan. So their their technology is sort of circa 1825. Um, so it's, uh, it's a very interesting place and the, the hide is in, uh, in, is in the pits for the, for a year and they take it through varying vats with increasing strengths of, uh, of bark and it's all, well, it's oak bark mainly and then they have, um, they'll do a sumac finish on it and that takes another three months so it's fairly expensive uh but not 
radically so. It's just sort of like once you have the process established, you just keep pulling out the same amount. <clears throat> okay, well, well, we'll assume that that's going to be right now. Let's just see how our temperature is doing here. And then we'll do the second. Oh, is it is it gone off? Yeah. I, did I not put it up enough, or is that just there? Let's see what's happened here. Oh no, it's pretty hot. Yeah, that's it pretty hot. Let's just see what it is. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Um, I just my, this candy thermometer, I think, is probably a little bit inaccurate. Now, well, I do hope that isn't accurate. I can't imagine it's cooled off that much. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Piece number two. This is for the foot. <clears throat> okay. Okay. See what happens. burners lot. We've got a little decoration on this leather. Oh, really? Stab up the bottom. Whoa, okay. Yeah, yeah. That won't be easy to see. <laughs> Slow to shrink. So the color change in the water, both what you can hold and that, is, is from the tanning chemicals. Uh, the the color change for this? No, no, no the just water. The water because oh, it's turning dark brown. Yeah, and, yeah, it's the tanning coming out of the, okay. the leather. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the change in the color, the hide also darkens for the yeah. same reason. Um, when we get to the images, I'll show you one of. Uh, a bowl that's really, really dark, and that is because it, in fact, started off life as a, a, a piece for a chair and it pulled out of the jig so that uh, I had to reuse it. And so it got boiled twice, and that made it very dark. See, we're, we're, we're doing okay where it gets close to the burner. <laughs> But it's really slow. I mean, this 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 is really not hot. I should have. Oh yeah, we're getting there now. It's beginning to grow. Should have um, got it moving up a little. That's correct. Cool. Yeah, no, it's doing it now. But, uh, so if it's less than eighty-five ish. Yeah, it's, it just uh, takes longer, or it, it takes won't work? long. It takes. The, Shrinkage temperature is somewhere 70, 72 to, to 80. So it'll shrink when it's that high. But according to my you thermometer, it, it was not even that. But I think it's wrong because it is shrinking, but it's very slow. Uh, and, and it's also got hot spots. 
I mean, I used to do some of these things at a rolling boil, um, but when I started to do these kind of stretching jigs as opposed to just lasting the things over um, uh, concave, convex forms, um, it was made more sense to control the temperature more. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be slow. Now, does that affect that at all? Are you? No, um, I'll just heat it up again. Um, this will stay, it, this will cool, but it will still stay fairly dry, it's just fairly wet, and we can just do this kind of thing to ensure that it does. And then the torch. Um, I mean, I've, when I've had things that have not been going particularly well, uh, sometimes I will work at them. <laughs> So you can work. You can work at this. I mean, for things like the the chairs, where I have you know certain kinds of things, I come back and work at. Um, I will keep them, just cover them with towels, and then I'll come back and work on the areas that I need to work on with the, by reheating with the torch and manipulating. Them. Same thing with the tables. <clears throat> uh, no, I wasn't paying careful enough attention to this. Speaking of the chair, a wooden form that was molded. Yes. Yeah. The there. This. Well, I do have a photograph of some of the jigs. Uh, so it's quite, the, 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 the jigs for doing the chairs are quite complicated. So you'll see, at least get a sense of what they're, they're like. Someday I'll have proper photographs, but, right. A number of photographs. Um, uh, it is so, I so, I so, um, and this, the leather gets clamped into a jig, um, and then the whole thing gets immersed, but the tank is not big enough to do it all at once, so I do half, and turn it over, do half, and then sort of jiggle the middle and get it, uh, even. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it would be nice to have a very big tank, but uh, that's a lot of propane. Now, what are you looking for when you're looking at it now? Well, what I'm, I'm, I'm looking for it to be, this is close to shrunk, but I'm looking at the, um, you can see this area where it's dark. Um, it's... It, that's fully shrunk, but I'm not convinced that we're fully shrunk here on these edges. Um, I'm not sure that it's going to cause me too much difficulty if I don't bend more than that. I'm just going to try it. I mean, normally uh, this would be, when I'm working at about 85 degrees to 90, this would be done in three minutes. Um, uh, and you know, it, it would be starting to just sort of flatten, flatten out. Um, and because it's quick like that, it, the the temperature it, you get the uh, the surface 
gets more affected than, than the center. Whereas what's happening here, I suspect, is that I'm going to be affecting all the way through because it's so s slow, but I also won't get quite so much fiber change in the, in the, in the uh, flesh side. But we're gonna we're gonna try. Okay. Yeah, I'm used to having a little more, whoops, um, this may be a little too, too big anyway, I'm probably going to have to trim this. Is that other piece of leather somewhere around? Thank you. Yeah, you can see by looking at them, I mean, and you can see just on the flesh side, the difference in the color. Um, this is, you know, much darker. This, this is, there's, there's a shrink, all the shrinkage in this case is pretty much on the uh, outer surface, on the grain side, uh, whereas on this one you can see the darkness extends in about a sixteenth of an inch. So it's um, so there's m much more hardening that's gone on there, and <clears throat> I'm going to have to put it back in because <coughs> excuse me, um, it's. What happens when it's not hard enough is that it just doesn't properly support the, the bowl. Um, I have done that before and it didn't work. So we're hoping that that's getting a little warmer there while we're waiting. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I do a lot of, which is you know, one of the least interesting things you can do in life is take staples out. <laughs> Very Let me tell you something, right? Foam hardware actually make a pair of pliers that are designed to take out staples, and it works like a charm. Oh, I'll look for that. Yes, that's. Um, I I will look for that. Now. Uh, the, one of the problems may be for that is when this is hard and the staple is recessed, you may not be able to grab it with the pliers. Well, if, what it is is two teeth like this, yeah. one tooth like this. Ah. Huh? Well, uh, it would be worth it. It'd be worth a try. <clears throat> I wonder if my local home hardware, which I frequent regularly. <laughs> yes. Do you ever buy any from Lee Valley? Oh, yeah. They have, they've had them for about 20 years. Oh, okay. Yes, clamps. Yeah. You might recognize them. Yeah. Well, it's a little hotter. <clears throat> yeah. No, I um, do buy things from well, you see, this is the thing. I, I come out and try to tell you how to do some things, and I learn more than you do. 